um, 15 minutes, isn't it? Is that right, Phil? Yeah, I'm just going to put my stopwatch on because I tend to run... Oh, very good. Perfect. Well, let me just uh, double-check, sorry. I actually thought I was on a little bit later, so I'm not as organised as I'd hoped. Um, ba -ba -dum, two seconds. Okay, cool. So let me start to uh, introduce you to Green Saffron. Has anyone heard of Green Saffron, first of all, this company? Hey, brilliant. That's a good start. Okay, um, indeed, um, the title of my talk is um, uh, From India or to India uh, via Lincolnshire and Cork. And so really it's just to describe uh, my journey, my personal journey, and also the journey of the company. So I've got a whole bunch of slides together here that I'll zip through, and um, maybe if there's any questions or something, I might even have a chance for that. Um, but I've got like 30 slides to get through in 10 minutes. So it could be a bit of a bit of a journey. Okay, first of all, Green Saffron, we're a disruptive spice um, company. What does disruptive spice company mean? I suppose we're nicking a bit of um, uh, uh, the language from the IT world. Disruptive because we're a small, feisty Irish business. We are disrupting convention when it comes to the spice industry, um, particularly, and also I'd like to think uh, the food industry as well. Okay, what is Green Saffron? Well, Green Saffron is essentially um, uh, uh, pillared uh, or, or hangs its business on three core um, uh, pillars. Those being fresh spice, our unique supply chain, NPIP and recipes, and brand and marketing. This is where the company is realigning itself, and indeed, having just bumped into John a little earlier there, I was saying we're just going through a third round of funding and coming out of phase one of our, um, our Spice Odyssey, our, our journey into business, and just coming now into phase two of our next cycle of business, which is kind of what I'm going to be outlining in, in this talk here. So phase two, having matured a little over, over the last sort of eight years or so, um, we are now describing ourselves quite simply, simplifying everything. We're a unique supply chain, chain. we're MPD and recipes, we're brand and marketing. Everything else we'll outsource, we'll keep asset light, we'll keep feisty and we'll keep uh, on our toes. Mission statement. So we get the highest grade, most beautiful whole spices and we want to provide those to everybody. We're all inclusive. I don't want to be exclusivity and all these sort of bits and pieces to get as many people involved in such a beautiful ingredient that we can find, which is our gorgeous fresh spice as possible. So an all-inclusive policy to make our whole spices and exceptional quality um, blends available to everybody. And I suppose, yeah, to deliver lovely returns to our shareholders by 2020. We're a verified member of the um, Unique program, which is Origin Green, unique uh, to the world, um, and started in Ireland. So we are a verified member of that. We uh, support the Hope Foundation. Um, we're supporting um, uh, homeless children in India um, through the Irish charity Hope Foundation. And we are putting money into a school over there and uh, various programs to help educate. And we are supported ourselves via Enterprise Ireland. So, where did it all start? I came over to Ireland in 2004. I used to be in the music industry. You may have heard of Sugar Babes and All Saints and all that name dropping I can do. I found them sort of thing and, and that's what I used to do in my previous life, life. I was the first person to take DJs out of the field and put them into a studio. So I come from the acid rave, um, illegal warehouse party scene. So uh, there we go guys, that's where I am now. So that's where I started. Um, I started for my first company at the age of 18, my first record label, and I was out of the music industry at 34, which is when I moved to Ireland, here in the south of Ireland. Fell in love with Ireland, the Irish people, which I'll talk about more, and the lovely nurturing spirit that exists here in Ireland, which to me does not exist anywhere else in the world. Um, and indeed, I met my colleague Des, uh, now my gorgeous wife, uh, a local cork, Gary Vogel. So that was all done around Ballymaloo, doing a cookery course around there, which I couldn't really afford to do, but I scraped some pennies together and did that. Got married to my wife Olive, there's mum and dad in the background. So my father is Indian and my mother is English. That's probably quite important to the story as we progress, uh, in the fact that, you know, okay, so when you're younger, the, the certain people might tease you for not being Indian and other people might tease you for not being English. But now what I'm doing is making an advantage of that um, in everything that we do. Taking my Western sensibilities, as my father said to me, you'll send us out into the world with a head full of education and a heart full of love. So we went to possibly one of the most expensive schools in the UK, that's daddy scraping his pennies together. Um, uh, so learning about the Western ways uh, and etc. And obviously leveraging up my family, uh, my, my family um, background over in India. We have a very widespread throughout the whole of India. Um, so that's what we're utilizing. Met Mrs. Allen and started to my, reignited my passion for the love of food. 
Once I actually started to cook, I really started to miss spices. I was a chef after having done the cookery course um, for in the house, in Ballinu House for a couple of years, and I really started to miss spices. So I got on the phone uh, via my father, was put in touch with my cousin, Vivek, and it is Vivek that runs our Indian operation and still to this day continues to do so, and indeed I'll be talking about the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the investment that we're making there in India uh, further again now. But it all started 2006, and from day one we've been talking all about sourcing, um, direct with the farmers, trading direct with farmers, and indeed my family has a history, um, as it is in India, it's a generational thing, an honourable thing, um, that you tend to work with the same, um, through generations, work with the same family farms, etc. So we probably have an advantage over most people, I suppose, in that regard, um, when we started the business. There is a family history of it, well, not that I knew when I was growing up that we used to be in spice trade, but anyway. So there I am in farmers markets, that's actually in one of the recruit markets there. So we started in farmers markets, um, 2006, I had no money whatsoever, um, not a penny. I was earning 183 euros a week as a cook in Ballinlou House, paying 90 quid a week in rent, anyway go figure, and, and at the same time then doing double shifts and getting spices from my cousin um, and grind them in little spice grinders, popping them with teaspoons into little sachets and Olive, my now wife, my then girlfriend will be writing, handwriting recipes and handwriting labels and our first acquisition of a, a sparkly green pen and a sparkly red pen was awfully expensive. We had an argument about that. Um, but thank God she did buy those because obviously it started to pay dividends now. So we started in farmers markets with no money. We doubled our turnover year on year um, from 2007 through to 2010. Uh, and it wasn't until 2012 that we actually started to take ourselves seriously and write a business plan and stop just hanging on to the coattails. Plus the fact that I did invest a, a little bit of money from my previous life in the business. Um, and obviously I was determined to, to work as hard as I could doing five farmers markets a week to, to, to see the return on that. So, Green Saffron, we are game changers, as I was saying, a disruptive spice company. Innovation really does beat at the heart of every single thing that we do. Um, part of our brand values are 100% natural, celiac friendly. In fact, I just bumped into Andrea as well there from the Celiac Society. Um, every single one of our products has a, um, its own registered license number um, in this, for the Celiac Society. So, halal, celiac, vegan as well, where everything that we do is vegan. You don't have to be vegan, but our products are vegan friendly. No chemicals, no preservatives, no bulking agents, not even water, nothing dodgy, just purity. Purity and fresh flavour is what we're all about. If we have the most wonderful ingredients of fresh spice, then let's make sure that we carry that through to the actual product, and indeed to the end consumer. Because I'm, I'm personally just fed up with so many people saying so many different things about food products, and it just not being the case. We're really trying to make a stand with Green Saffron that we offer the best that there possibly is. A very exciting for us is something that happened um, relatively recently, as it mentions here, four or five months ago now. We have started into spice science. Has anyone heard of Ayurveda? Ayurveda, haha, -ha, brilliant. That's Ayurveda, not Ayurveda, the hair product. Ayurveda is the Hindu philosophy, as I'm sure you know. Um, basically describes the science of life, the science of longevity. Um, it's uh, a 5,000 year old philosophy in India. Um, well, I was brought up with that, with my father and my, my, my father's family, uh, and I want to now prove that in science. Essentially what I'm looking to do is to prove that the polyphenols, the oils of spice, have beneficial effect on gut and brain function. Um, one of the biggest um, uh, illnesses that are predicted by 2030 is mental illness. So um, what we've done is with Enterprise Ireland to help fund us, we've linked in with Paul Ross, the amazing Paul Ross professor at UCC, the head of the APC department down there, uh, and also with his wife Catherine Stanton in Chuggas. And we're thrilled that we're six, five, four or five months into the project and everything seems to be going the way that we would like. Yes, there's going to be an awful lot coming out of this, but ultimately I'd love to be able to say by Q1 2019, if someone's eating a steak, here, put some of this ketchup or some of our condiment on it, it'll help you digest your meat better, proven in science. So this is the sort of thing we're going for. We are the only company in the world doing that. We're a tiny little feisty Irish spice company. The big boys haven't got hold of that yet, although I'm not sure <laughs> if they might do now. But anyway, uh, not even the guys in NACE. Um, so we have a unique supply chain, like I say, boots on ground. That's really quite relevant to to the boots on to the whole supply chain. Um, 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 well, getting your supply chain right. Boots on ground simply means that uh, we have family on ground. It's done through my cousins. We have a, a spice history of generations, as I've mentioned, trading in, in spice. And therefore, it is less likely that we will ever be done. Uh, the spice industry is one of those industries, as with most, 
um, that there is so often the corners that can be cut. There are bits of paper that can be quite easily paid for to be rubber stamped. None of that happens with the Greens African supply chain. What we say we deliver, we actually do deliver. And what do we deliver? We deliver new season's crop, we deliver fresh harvested um, single origin spices with the highest volatile oil content um, and, uh, on the market, that's, that's guaranteed. And steam sterilised as well. Steam sterilised is important when it comes to the ingredients um, uh, world. And what we're offering therefore is reduction in complexity to the end consumer. Um, I'm really lucky, NPD, New Product Development, I work with so many amazing people and I tend to sound like I'm name dropping but I tend to work with so many lovely people so be it Alain Ducasse or uh, Jean Herbichon or Pierre Kaufman, all these amazing Michelin people whereby I'm learning constantly and hopefully with that knowledge I can distill it and put it into our retail products but at the same time with food scientists as I've mentioned, Paul Ross at UCC, Catherine Stanton at Chuggers. And I've, um, you may notice on there, that's the latest Marks and Spencer Lamb, Rob and Josh. So I did the log Lamb, Rob and Josh for Marks and Spencers. They had a certain um, time frame and a volume of sales. We doubled the volume within the first month that they had predicted. So they're all about me, Marks and Spencers, which is lovely. Um, I also did the chili chocolate bar for Green and Blacks, which is Cabras, which is Craft, um, a few years ago. Um, so I'm involved in various projects like that and taste of different sausages. Do you know what? Cranswick, a company in Hull, which is where near my parents live, they make 400 tons of sausages a week. It's just phenomenal. So I was there helping them with their um, uh, uh, decreasing salt uh, and increasing flavor profile. Indeed, for our own products, Green Saffron, um, we love to get involved in, in NPD, like I was saying, innovation. We're currently working on a new naan bread and a fresh paste concept as well. Marketing, we're a small company, we do not have budgets like all these big boys over here, so we have to be disruptive in everything that we do. Um, so it's a, it, a disruptive marketing attitude um, is probably is portrayed in our guerrilla marketing style, in our guerrilla marketing action. We don't have big budgets, so we're going on, you know, I'm very fortunate that I have a bit of a TV presence. I do Sunday brunch, and I'm back on Sunday brunch on the 6th of November on Channel 4. Um, RTE, I've just been commissioned or given the green light for my own TV program um, with RTE over here, which we start to film in January, which is actually funded, which is very interesting, and I think quite credibly, by the Gujarati Tourism Board. So it's funded by an Indian body, an Irish TV program funded by an Indian body. So I think that's, um, I think that's great. I had a cookbook, there's another cookbook coming, and lots of press and stuff. Essentially, guerrilla marketing. We simply can't afford the big campaigns today, um, so we have to do it in another way uh, to keep light on our feet. Awards. We're very fortunate. We've won lots of lovely awards along the way. I suppose most notably in 2012, as it happens, was a Seattle door. Now, Neil Seattle's coming up in October, and I'm sure quite a few of us are going to be over there. But we won the Seattle door award in 2012, beating Jacobs and beating Donegal Catch and all these nicely established companies for innovation. So we were the country winners for Ireland. And we've won along the way also um, a nice few um, gold stars at the Great Taste Awards. So, phase one. Phase one is a company which I thought I'd get through a bit quicker. Um, the summary, essentially, we now have a strong board. We're very fortunate with the, with the team that we have on board with the investors. We've launched into Irish and into French multiples. We launched into Monoprix last year. We launched into Carrefour hypermarkets this year. Um, we have a proven retail brand in the local market, in Irish market, growing 41%, um, 14 to, year 14 to 15. And um, we have a highly motivated and driven management team with proven MPT skills. Um, I'm very fortunate along my life, uh, we have now a very meaningful black book of um, a global network of contacts and a strong pipeline. However, phase one, and I'm going to stop pushing on a little bit, phase one, everyone was biting at the cherry. We had such a complex um, product flow, it grew organically. It essentially ended up with a 15% gross margin, which anybody in the room kind of knows that that's not good enough if you want to be pushing on. So phase two is all about starting from strength, it's about scale and internationalizing, it's about changing our business model. Changing our business model means very simply to add simplicity into, into the model, um, starting with our product flow so that we actually increase one more than double our gross margin. It means that our retail jars are going to go down from the 460 down to the 295 gram. There'll be a lower price point on shelf. Um, and also it, it makes it uh, the, the more applicable possibly to, to, the, family, um, to the family unit size uh, that, it, that is of today, the smaller family unit size. We're doing a brand refresh, which I personally love because it's very creative and very exciting. And these are some of the ways that we could be going. We're going to be looking like uh, Route 2 um, 
sort of a, we're going to take this as a standard and move forward from there. So we're re, re, not rebranding, we're refreshing the brand. And the reason for this is purely that when we came out in 2012 into Tesco Island, the landscape in our category has changed so very significantly. We've always been celiac friendly, we've always been vegan, we've always been halal, but we don't message it enough. Plus the fact we want to message more our purity and all these things. We're changing management structure, so we can bring in a CEO, um, which will allow me to sort of hopefully bring in more business and continue to do what I like to do. And so why are we changing? We're changing to increase margin to green saffron, as I've mentioned. We're focusing, therefore, more on our core activities, sales and marketing, uh, predominantly. We're reducing costs associated with stock holding. There simply will be no cost uh, stock holding as we change to the royalty model. That will also allow us to reduce our funding costs, um, guarantee availability of product through our wonderful strategic partners, and give us also um, increased um, uh, cash flow. Essentially today we're in Tesco Super Value Don's Booth's Monoprix and we're starting to work with those lovely people on your right, all via a company, a British company that we're introduced to via Tesco Island, LDH Nadoria Hines. They drop 80 containers a week into the UK supermarkets. You could say 36% of their business is Tesco and 18% Sainsbury's. Anyway, they're going to be our global logistics providers. We're talking to Carrefour supermarkets, a potential of 1,200 supermarkets for launch next year. Um, we've engaged with Albert Hein through one of their companies, Brand M, in Holland. So we're thrilled to bits with that. And also on the ingredients side, a personal pet project, which I can't believe might actually now come to realization, is I've always thought I've had the next route for the Indian ready meal range. And that's something we've been developing and we'll have first test samples in about four weeks. This is getting a bit typical now. So essentially, look, the ingredients and seasonings is worth 12.2 billion. It's, um, it's growing 5% year on year. So by 2020, it's gonna be worth a massive 16.6 .6 billion as a total market, uh, addressable market. It's a phenomenal business to be involved in the spice industry and it's forever growing. It's one of the few global businesses to actually be increasing year on year. Where we are in terms of our uh, retail range, we have a total addressable market just under 700 million. You can see here, Ireland 11 million, UK 200. Do you know, so there's a, that's where we're sort of aiming ourselves between Benelux and France. I would love to be able to tell you that the reason we're not in UK is because we planned it, because we saw Brexit coming. We didn't. We just had an opportunity in France and we've had now an opportunity in Benelux and it's uh, quite fortuitous for us, you might say. So, just to round up, you're pleased to hear, Fiona. Um, we are, um, what is our vision? What are we trying to do? We're loving what we're doing. We're so excited to be involved, um, to be here in Ireland and to be working, starting from farmers markets and to achieve what we've, what we've done to date is brilliant. But there's an awful long way to go. I want to achieve so much in the food industry and, and bring so much back into Ireland and add so much to the, to the food world in, in general. So we're going to be implementing our new royalty-based business model. Um, that's happening now over the next couple of months, uh, two, three, four months. The sustainable supply chain, we're going to keep ratcheting that up and a lot of heavily investing in that, which includes, I'm actually flying out to Gujarat on mid-October um, with a view to securing the funds for the TV program, but also we are um, uh, investing in a unit in India that we're going to be BRC steam sterilizing all our spices in India and therefore cutting more complexity out of the chain. Um, then associating with the, with the likes of Dawn Meats to get our ready meals going. LDH, as I mentioned, is a global logistics supplier, Team India, food scientists, distributors, and hopefully keep having lots of disruptive and uh, 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 fun on the TV. So, just want to thank you very much for listening. You've been very kind. I've probably really dazzled you with too, much, uh, too many words. I don't know if there are any questions or if I'm allowed to take questions, if there are anybody who's got any questions.